The deeper we go into 2024, the more records Hollywood continues to break in regards to low box office totals. I think, what, uh, January and February and even the first quarter were big fall-offs, big drop-offs from 2023, which are already big drop-offs from 2022. And, well, I think you kind of get the point, and a lot of people have been pointing to various different reasons as to why the, why the theaters just haven't recovered from the pandemic. Well, it's mostly because a lot of the slop that you were putting out pre-pandemic weren't exciting anybody to come back after you decided to raise all of the ticket prices and no, people are finally having enough. And this is another obvious example because all of your big blockbusters are getting spun out on your stupid streaming services 15, 30, 45 days later. So yeah, unless there is a big reason that you need to go see something on the biggest screen possible, Dune 2 was an excellent example of this for 2024, but you take a look at the rest of the schedule and does anything invoke those basal desires? Or do you really think that the experience for Deadpool and Wolverine is going to be bolstered by insufferable troglodytes on their cell phone? Tackle laughing at every butt joke? No, I don't think so. There's not going to be another spectacle film in 2024. The only spectacle that you're going to see at a box office throughout the rest of this year is if one manages to burn down. Like, it's tough, man, but hey, Hollywood made this bed, now they got to lie in it. Hopefully there's no children in this one. Two-thirds of U.S. adults would rather wait to watch movies on streaming than go to theaters. It's kind of crazy, right? Because also, you look at all of the films that were released either day and date or just exclusively on Amazon. Hell, all the TV shows that Disney Plus puts out or Peacock or Paramount Plus, whatever all of the other streaming services, most of them that don't turn a profit, and then the one that is profitable with Netflix, they're putting out movies of equal quality, well, not really saying all that much, but of equal budgetary proportions, and when you look at the theatrical releases, none of them are that inspiring. So let's take a look at this. A new, ha a new poll by HarrisX, exclusive to IndieWire, found that 34% of U.S. adults would rather watch movies in theaters, which means a solid two-thirds would rather wait for them to be released on streaming. For some old fossils like myself, you know, would rather wait for home media releases it's because I think stream well, streaming quality is just ass, especially for something that I like, but I mean, there's not very many good things coming out anyways. The competition continues between streaming services and the Hollywood engine. Well, we still see evidence of, lo of loyal moviegoers in recent box office numbers. Yes, Barbenheimer and all that crap, but it also goes to show, at least on the Oppenheimer side of things, if there are good films going to theaters, people will go and watch them. But like I said, with the slop that has come out this year, there hasn't, there really hasn't been anything good come out in the form of entertainment really outside of the one video game that i talk about ad nauseum so i need not repeat it here you already know what i'm talking about and the other ones that were big successes they've all shot themselves in the foot except for pal world it's, it's so wild the state of modern entertainment in 2024 we all kind of had this idea that the box office was going to be in the dumps and hollywood was going to emulate in 2024 but we also didn't anticipate the other entertainment mediums were also going to follow suit so it's so so strange competition oh, i'm sorry uh while we still see evidence of loyal moviegoers in recent box office numbers our study shows that two uh two and three movie watchers prefer stream movies at home and to be fair those sentiments have been out there for the better part of a decade because home uh, home theater experiences have continued to catch up and in most cases surpass your local theater okay like i haven't been to the theater i've talked about this before dark knight rises was the last film that i seen in theaters and that experience was trash not to speak of the film specifically but overly loud i'm like i'm 34 but i'm an old man i don't like things that are that loud okay I don't also like people, so having to watch a film that I was really looking forward to and then being disappointed with it, but then also to be surrounded by a bunch of slack-jawed yokels, not exactly the biggest fan of that experience, so the moment that I could afford a screen that had higher fidelity and a sound system that could rival that, uh, rival that of the Cineplex, well, hell, I had no reason to go. 
Despite this causing some upheaval in the industry, it also means that the demand for the content is only increasing. Nearly half of the consumers say they stream movies weekly more than seven times as frequently as those oh, those who do so in theaters. Yeah, couple that with skyrocketing ticket prices and even with Netflix continuing to upcharge their consumer base. Like I forget, like what are they at right now? Is it close to $20 per month for a Netflix subscription? I remember when it started at nine and I hopped off the bandwagon at what, 11? 11 or 12, and then being even more restrictive, but with their policies at least, no more, no more password sharing. It's like, I'll oh, just shut up already. You barely put out decent quality new content. Everybody just watches your back catalogs. Uh, Brady's pollsters also found that 30% of US a strict Oh, 30% of us, sorry, stream a movie two or three or two or more times per week. The same uh, percentage of respondents say that they go to theaters a few times a year. Don't cry, AMC, Cinemark, and others. We still prefer you. Now, for those more aligned with Nicole Kidman's opinion that she got paid for, on the matter, the experience of watching a movie on the biggest screen possible that brings 59% of patrons. The next closest factor, the quality of the surround sound systems, was a checked off by 47% of surveys respondents, 39% uh, said escaping from distractions at home was more important to them. Yeah, couple all of that stuff when I'm in control of what you watch, the ability to pause and hell, even just give up on a film if it sucks too bad. But also, you know, not having to shell out $15 and then to be overcharged for snacks. I think that's a bigger reason, but the theater recliners uh, resonated with 37% and refreshments captured 32% of the vote. Here are the other factors and favors of theaters. In descending order, the movie is exclusively shown in theaters. Yeah, 30%, I'd imagine, you know, taking the rest of this stuff off and it was just simply a movie going experience that would have to be higher advanced viewing technology such as yes 3d and imax if you need to go to the biggest screen possible of course 30 percent uh, the experience of watching a movie with an audience yeah 26 percent i guess if you're done with that nostalgia 24 per that's oh yeah right going to a theater i remember going to a theater yes and get touched funny by a random guy in the dark uh, uh to watch a movie premiering or special screening well, yeah, I guess. Well, you can just also point to the number of legacy releases that are coming out this year. Like, finally, you know, the Warner Brothers one smart decision that they're going to make this entire year, releasing the extended Lord of the Rings trilogy. Rest in peace, Bernard Hill, King Theoden, obviously. That happened earlier this week, and at least at time of recording. But what came in number two, uh, not that long ago at the box office, the week that the Fall Guys ended up debuting. 25th anniversary releasing of uh, Star Wars Episode One: Phantom Menace. Like, come on, man. You know something's amiss when a re-release of a 25-year-old movie and a largely considered, prior to the Disney acquisition, the worst Star Wars film. You know that there's some competition, competition between Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones is the worst, but like, come on, man. That's where we're at. A movie from 1999 beating the brakes off of everything else. But whatever, man. Uh, the survey was conducted online by Harris X uh, from March 11th and 12th of 2024 captured responses from more than a thousand adults weighted them by gender age race ethnicity and religion or region sorry it'd be weird to organize them by religion but you never know in today's day and age and then there are oh i'm sorry uh the sampling margin of error was three percent yeah uh, plus or minus yeah so standard deviation yeah okay uh then there are home bodies to be fair we can all generally relate to this group 53 percent of those uh, who do not frequent theaters cited the cost of movie tickets as a major reason you know so i would say 42 percent also mentioned the cost of concessions hey there you go i wasn't a part of this research but hey man it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that these are the obvious conclusions to draw well those recliners were a pretty solid motivator for the theater crowd an even larger percentage 40 percent of the streamers uh, streaming lovers cited the comfort of viewing at home versus a theater as a reason to wait i guess 24 percent so that they were straight up uninterested oh that would be me uh we're not sure what their problem is oh the movies suck it's pretty easy to figure out concerns over sanitation and hygiene oh yeah whatever man 22 percent said a need to pee and the inability to pause movie or take a break oh well, yeah i suppose so the rest of the reasons for those who rarely go to the movie theaters again in descending order are dis uh, distractions from other members of the audience yes inconvenient travel yeah because not everybody lives in a big city and i've said this before 
before, like I live in a 50,000 person city, Grand Prairie, Alberta, obviously I talk about it often. We have, we used to have, when I was a kid, we had three cinemas of various size. We had the Jan, we had the Lyric, then we had the Cineplex, the eight screen, 10 screen Cineplex. I don't even know what it's at right now, but the Cineplex is the only one that's left. For a city of 50,000 people, the service area of 100,000 and the next closest theater being in, I don't even know if Rycroft has one, which is an hour to the north. Dawson Creek, which is, yeah, an hour northwest. Like, it's not that, it's the only place that's there. And there's a lot of people that live in between there that just, I couldn't imagine anybody would be coming out for. Let's just say in 2024, Argyle, that ain't happening. Inconvenient theater locations, yes, of course. Uh, selection of film showing, yeah, it's all trash, bro. Limited availability or inconvenient show times, again, yes, and seat selection, of course. Yes, there are a multitude of reasons, but a lot of these, uh, a lot of these excuses fall by the wayside. If there was something at the theater worth viewing instead of the alternative being a yeah I'll give it a try when it's on amazon because it comes free with my prime subscription or y yeah you know i'll check this out because i got a password for you know this streaming service yeah, i'll check it out if it's got a slow weekend or something like that but that's kind of the state of modern entertainment nobody's really excited about much coming out like i talk about you know house of the dragon season two coming out but outside of that when it comes to tv nothing really you know excites me at all joker 2 looking forward to that somewhat might go to the theater that's the first time in a long time where i've actually had the inkling to maybe go check something out on opening weekend but they're few and far between instead of trying to make excuses trying to figure out what the problem is okay trying to have a more luxury experience for the people that want to go to the theaters it's really simple guys release better media so with all that said thank you all very much for the gift of your time i've been don consuelo i want you to follow your gut and get after it Take care, everyone.